So as ever, when it's just one of us, I'll be saying all of the words, white and yellow, um, and I invite you to join in with the words in yellow. So let's pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The world belongs to God, the earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silence, the stones would shout aloud. Open our lips, O God, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Holy God, maker of all, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life, have mercy on us. Let us in the silence confess our faults and admit our frailty. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to our brokenness, to the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Move among us, O God. Give us life. Let your people rejoice in you. Make our hearts clean within us. Renew us in mind and in spirit. Give us again the joy of your help. With your spirit of freedom, sustain us. So as you were arriving, as I said, I did ask you what two days today was, whether any of you knew. Um, Susan got it right today. One of them is Candlemas. Um, the day when we celebrate the presentation of Jesus at the temple, uh, which is the reading that we're going to have today from Luke chapter 2. Um, the other day, since apparently nobody else know, knew, um, the clue was that I kept repeating the question, is Groundhog Day. Um, so who knows, this may be the hundredth time we've done this morning prayer together, or it may be the first. Um, but it is Groundhog Day and Candlemas today. But today, um, in morning prayer, we're going to be focusing on Candlemas, the presentation of Jesus at the temple, with this reading from Luke chapter 2. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed 
so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God, and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. So as ever, let me know in the comments what you think of that reading, what jumped out to you as we read through it, what occurred to you, what things did you notice, did you like, did you not like, were you challenged by? Um, for me, I really, really like this reading. Um, it always feels, to me at least, a bit of a shame that it comes now rather than as part of the Christmas story, with some of the things that we managed to squeeze into the Christmas story to make them fit into the whole narrative. Um, such as the, the the visit of the Magi, which was potentially up to two years later. Um, and yet this, just eight days after Jesus was born, is, is so often skipped over and ignored. And unless you are of a tradition where you celebrate Candlemas, um, you're very unlikely to hear this reading. But to me, I find it beautiful. Um, I love it for so many different reasons. And the characters of Simeon and Anna... I think are just amazing testaments and amazing challenges to us as well. Um, these two people that have spent their whole lives waiting um, f for what they've been told is going to happen, waiting for this promise from God that they will meet the Messiah, waiting for so long for this one thing to happen, and apparently seeming to never lose hope. And I just find it incredible to, to see these two stories just so so casually kind of almost passed over in the narrative that even as they're talked about and they're mentioned in Luke's version of events it's still kind of much more focused on what it is that they say about Jesus rather than these two people of incredible faith. Ali just saying um, never noticed Anna's age gap age before 84 years old amazing so many different people present at the temple. Absolutely. And, and this is what I mean about saying that when we hear about Simeon and Anna, about having waited for so long, about waiting all of their lives um, for, for this one thing to happen, it's an incredible testament to what faith can look like, what hope can look like, how it can keep going through ups and downs and challenges of life. Um, we, we see in, in the passage that Anna had lost her husband and, and yet despite this had still kept that hope and that faith in God. We know very little about Simeon's story other than he would not see death until he'd met the Lord's Messiah. Um, but we can only assume that as all human lives do, there were ups and downs and joys and challenges. And yet again, through all of that, he's kept his faith. As Susan says, um, it's an example of patience and hope. It encourages us not to give up. And I think this is exactly true for us at the moment, where we are as a society, as a church, as a world, that we often talk about the promises and the hopes of God. And we often talk about the things that we have to look forward to, the things that God has said will happen, that new heaven, that new earth, that peace resting on humanity, all of these amazing promises that we've been given. And yet, when we look around the world, we see pain and difficulty and suffering. And can't help but think, why has this not happened? Why is it not as God said it would be? What's gone wrong? What's changed? What's different? And so perhaps this story of Simeon and Anna encourages us once again to keep looking out and waiting for that visit from the Lord's Messiah, that visit from Jesus. Seeing actually that Jesus is at work in this world, the Holy Spirit is at work in this world. If we're patient enough to wait and see where it is happening. But also there's that challenge to hope and to patience and to expectation for what is still to come. It's the perfect story, I think, for, 
for now and not yet, showing us to look around to see where God already is, but also looking forward to see that there is more, to see that that perfect love of God will reign, to see that there is hope to cling to. I heard it beautifully expressed a couple of weeks ago, um, someone talking about that famous verse from 1 Corinthians 13, um, the greatest, the faith, hope and love remain, and the greatest of these is love, talking about the fact that faith and hope will pass away, but love will remain, because ultimately that's what we have faith in, that's what we hope for, that perfect love and presence of God, and we live in, as Christians in the assurance that that love is coming in its fullness, that that love is with us now, but coming in an even more profound and beautiful way. It's an amazing promise and one day we will get there and faith and hope will no longer be required because all we will know is love. But for now we hear the stories of people like Simeon and Anna and a challenge to think actually maybe we need to just wait, have that hope, cling to that hope, share that hope for now because something else is coming. Every time I go to click on one, someone else comments something and pushes it up. Penny just pointing out brilliantly as well, um, another part of this story. Um, the part about Mary and Simeon's words to Mary. Um, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is a, a, a new mother of, of an eight-year-old baby being told some of the things that are going to happen. And some of it is about the, the amazing things that Jesus is going to do. But then this last bit, then a sword will pierce your own soul too. Just thinking how painful and difficult that must have been. Um, and yet again, we see the incredible commitment and faith and trust of Mary. The strength that this woman had that is so often overlooked. Um, instead passed off as some meek and mild character. But instead the strength to keep going, knowing that things are going to be so painful for her and for Jesus. But keeping going and keeping on and showing that love to Jesus, letting him be the person he was created and called to be. It's created is probably the wrong choice of words, but the person that he was he was sent to be. It's an amazing example of strength alongside this amazing example of hope and patience. It's so difficult to have all of these three things. And yet we're told this story that shows us what comes as a result. We know that. We know that the patience of Simeon and Anna shows that they had this opportunity then to see the thing that they had longed for most, to encounter the Lord's Messiah amongst them and, and to see this amazing gift that had been given to humanity. And the strength of Mary that allows humanity to encounter God. Without the strength of Mary, then Jesus just isn't the same that, that something of this story is lost and God still would have worked and done amazing things but the story of Mary shows us that strength that humanity has to seek after God and that strength that it can take to follow God as well remembering that discipleship can be costly and difficult and overwhelming and sometimes I think it feels like particularly so in the modern world with everything going on around us talk of war and conflict and pandemic and climate change so many difficult things, but we're assured that having faith and hope and strength to seek after and to follow God, even and especially when it's difficult, brings us to that amazing place of gift that only God can bring, showing us that God is good, that God is love, that God is there. And it's an amazing promise for all of us today. So I want to encourage you um, on this day of Candlemas, this day of Groundhog Day, this day as we stand at the official end of the Christmas season, um, depending on your tradition, um, to hold on to some of that hope. I think when we celebrate Christmas, we have that amazing feeling of hope of God with us, that gift of Emmanuel that can so easily fade and disappear during January. But we're reminded today that that hope is still here for us that hope of God with us, that we can be Simeon and Anna each and every day, meeting with the Lord's Messiah, meeting with Jesus. But we're also challenged to be that Simeon and Anna and Mary, looking forward for the hope that is to come and holding on to that strength that is so often required to see it. But that strength and that hope that brings that most amazing gift 
God with us, of perfect hope, of perfect love, of perfect recreation and peace. So hold on to that hope today. Share that hope with someone else. Tell the world what it is that we hope for, that we hope for God's recreation, that we hope for the coming of that perfect and eternal love that will never pass away. It feels like a good time to pray, I think. So I've got the prayer list in front of me, um, as always, with the names from Monday. Um, if there are any that you want to add as we go through, um, then do do put them in the comments um, as we're going through. Uh, as ever, if I miss any while I'm praying and scribbling at the same time, I do always go back through and check so they won't be left off long term, even if I do miss them today. Um, but then there's that. But um, we're going to just pause and we're going to pray together. If you want to offer a prayer in the comments, um, please do so as well. But let's just stop and let's pray together this morning. Generous and loving and holy God. We thank you that you are with us today and every day. That still a month and a bit on from Christmas, we still have that promise of Emmanuel God with us. We can still know your peace and love present in our lives today and every day. We can still know your movement in our hearts, in our churches, in our communities. We can still know you at work in all of your creation. And so God, we pray today for that spirit of hope. That we would know your hope present in our lives. Hope of what is to come. Hope of eternal love and peace and grace. But enable us too, Lord, to be people who share that hope with others. To be people that journey alongside this world. Telling them of all you have done all you continue to do and all you promise you will do. Lord, hope can be so difficult in this world filled with conflict and oppression, injustice and pain, suffering and heartache. But we know that your love overcomes all things. We know that the darkness cannot overcome your light. And so we gather as this online prayer community, trusting in that amazing gift for each one of us, uniting us with one another and uniting us with your world. Lord, for all the concerns on our hearts and minds. For all the challenges in this world. For all the people facing fear and injustice and suffering today. We pray for your blessing. For the peace that only you can bring. for the wisdom on how to act and how to live, for the strength to stand up for what is right, and for the love and light which truly can change the world. Lord, as we gather, we pray for those names on our prayer list today. 
for those people known to us and unknown. We pray for Babs, for Clive and Sue, for Keith's family and friends, for Peter and Angela, Stella, Wendy, Caitlin, Anne, Judith, Jackie, Marty, Shirley, Minnie, Glyn and Kath, Louise, Alan, Mari, Maggie, Pam, Darren, Linda and her family, Marilyn, Linda, Anne, Maggie, Jane, Steve, Wills, Ravi, Soleil, Dorothy, Dave, Iris, Joyce, Dan, Jude, Catherine and her family, Tanya, Jean, Catherine, Phil, Becky, Karen and family, Julian, Jacob, Kathleen, Joe's family, Thomas, Alex and baby Lucas, Mohammed. For all these and all the other people on our hearts and minds this morning we pray, trusting in your faithfulness to our prayers and to your people. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. With the whole church, we affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and the world. O God, lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth, from despair to hope, from fear to trust, from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. We ask it for your own namesake. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will not offer to God offerings that cost us nothing. Go in peace and love to serve. We will seek peace and pursue it. In the name of the Trinity of love, God in community, holy and one. Amen.